As stated previously, at the moment we're using the default uh, caching mechanism which is file cache which is good for development and just getting things going however when you want to start uh, pushing your application to production you might want something a little bit more performant and so in this one we're actually going to swap what we're using to use redis cache before we do that though there's something else which i'm just going to show you Choose high definition for the best viewing experience and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon and welcome. At the moment when we're storing items in the cache pool, they stay there indefinitely and they only get removed if we perform some kind of manual intervention to remove them. However, that will start taking up space and taking up memory. What would be a better solution would be to set an expiry on them, just something sensible which uh, meets the requirements of your application, some kind of time limit after which time they actually get removed from the cache, and they only go back into the cache when that um, item when that key gets requested again and so there's a very easy way that you can do this in our promotion cache find valid for product method we just need to come to this bit here where we're saying return cache get and you'll see we have this item uh, that we've not actually used that used yet this is a cache pool item and on this inside of this callback we can actually set an expiry so what i'm going to do here is just set it to something sensible so what would be a good idea it all depends on your application how long you set it for something like an hour for something like this might be a, a decent default uh, and so i'll probably leave it at that but before i leave it at that i'm just going to set it to something really low just to demonstrate this in action. So if I set this to five seconds, you'll see that after five seconds, um, it expires and it gets removed from the cache. So we need something which will demonstrate that us, demonstrate that to us. So I'll put a var dump in here, miss. And so the first time we hit it, we should get a miss. And then the second time round, we should uh, not see that, depending on how fast we do this, of course. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that that is definitely not in the cache. So I'm going to delete it manually. Symphony console cache colon pool colon delete cache app. So that's the name of the pool that we are using. And then the key is valid for product. Hit go. Okay, and so it says the cache item valid for product one was successfully deleted. Just ignore this deprecation for now. Let's go over to Postman and fire this off. Okay, so first time we get a miss, I'll quickly fire it again. And now let's count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Run it again. And as you can see, it's expired. And so we're hitting that callback again. So like I say, let's go back and set it to something a bit more sensible. So we'll say an hour for this. All depends on your application and what you think will be a sensible default. This value here is in seconds. What I'd like to do now is set up uh, Redis cache. So first thing I'm going to do, because we're going to be using Docker, is I'm just going to run Docker Compose down. And then I'm going to go and make an adjustment to my Docker Compose.yaml file. So here I'm going to add a service called Redis, and the image will be Redis. 7.0.0 and then ports 6379 is standard for Redis. The next thing I'm going to do is go over to my config and so in config packages cache here I can uh, update this file in order for it to use Redis and so here is the entry for Redis I just need to uncomment these lines here and so uh, the default storage is cache app, and so now we're setting that to Redis. What I need to do is change the address for the provider. So double quotes, percent percent, and we're going to read an environment variable. And this is going to work in pretty much the same way as what we did for our database. Let's go and give ourselves a reminder. And so here, uh, the URL for our database, we said we're going to... Uh, resolve an environment variable and we use this naming convention here which was the name of the service for by underscore url so that's exactly what we're going to do for redis also so i might as well actually just go and copy this and 
and all I'm going to change is this to Redis. So Redis is the name of our service underscore URL. Before I run Docker Compose up again to make this work, there's one package which we need to pull in from Composer, and that is Predis. And this is just a library for uh, helping PHP work with Redis. So Composer require, and it is Predis. So P Redis, and then same again. So nice and easy to remember, hit go. That's now installed, so the final step will be to run Docker Compose up. And we should now be using Redis, so let's go back to Postman and test this out. So I'll fire this off. Okay, that seems to be working. We'll actually go back to PHP Storm and we shall empty that item from the cache. And we'll put our var dump in here again miss let's go back to postman send the request okay so we get a miss fire it again we'll wait five seconds five four three two one fire it once more in fact i didn't actually set this to five seconds silly me okay so let's go and empty that from there again okay so we should see a miss we'll fire this now it's in the cache we'll wait for five five four three two one fire it again miss okay that's all working well we now have redis uh, working as our caching mechanism and we've also set an expiry so the items don't stay in there lingering in the cache for any longer than what they need to if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like youtube to show you more of my content all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon each week i release a number of new recordings if you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.